it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. If you're new to my channel, I grow cut flowers in Zone 5A in Northwest Iowa. And today I am starting my first seeds of the 2022 cut flower season, which is really exciting because it is literally five degrees outside right now. So it's fun to be inside doing something for the garden. So today I am starting my Lysianthus seed. And if you have ever grown Lysianthus, you know that it's a little bit tricky to grow and it is super slow growing, which is why I am starting it so early. Last year was the first year I grew Lysianthus. I learned a lot about starting it from seeds. So I'm changing up my process on how I do it this year and I will go through all of that. But first I wanna share with you the 10 different varieties that I'm growing this year. All right, so like I said, I have 10 different varieties that I am starting today. I got these seeds from two different places. The white envelopes are all from Johnny's and the clear envelopes are from a wholesale group for flower farmers that I'm a member of on Facebook. And I will link that down below, but that is a really, really good resource for um, flower farmers, especially that are just starting out because you can order low quantities of both seeds and bulbs, and then you can try out different things that you have never grown before. I have ordered a lot from that site um, over the last year, and it is a really great resource. Um, but first, I'm gonna go through the kinds that I have from Johnny's. Two of these are what I grew last year, and I'll put pictures on the screen as I go through these. Okay, so the first one I grew last year was the Roseanne Black Pearl. This one grew the best for me. It's a really pretty deep purple color, so this is definitely on my grow list this year. And the second one that I am growing this year that I also grew last year is the Voyage 2 Light Apricot. And this one was also really pretty. I paired this with my Pro Cut Plum Sunflowers it was a perfect match. So that is another plan for this year. The other one I got from Johnny's, which I don't think was available last year, but it's back, is the Roseanne Brown. And I am really excited about this variety. Now the other ones that I'm growing are the Double Echo Series Blue, the Double Rosita Series Pink, the Echo Pure White, the Double Echo Champagne, the Double Echo Yellow, the Double Echo Lavender, and then I have a Double Echo Series Mix. So this will be a mix of all the colors offered in that series. So I think through those 10 varieties that I'm starting, I'm gonna have a really nice color range for the Lysianthus. So last year when I started my Lysianthus, I started them in little trays and then I eventually transplanted them into these 200 cell trays. And I started them that way um, because I was really limited on space when I first started last year. I just had one shelving unit with my grow lights and so I was trying to save space so I knew that I had room for everything else. Um, well, I have more shelves this year and so I'm gonna go ahead and initially start them in these 200 cell trays. I also think it affected the amount of plants that I had because when I transplanted the tiny, tiny little seedlings into these 200 cell trays, I think I maybe damaged some of the roots and then some of them died off. It also took a really long time to transplant those really tiny plants into these cell trays. And so this year by putting them directly into these cell trays, I'm gonna save all of that time too. So I'm gonna start two 200 cell trays of the Lysianthus. So I'm gonna start 400 plants total, which is plenty. I know that not all of these will actually germinate or develop into full plants, which is totally fine. I don't need 400 plants, but it's better to have more than what I need than not enough at all. So the first thing I need to do is put all of my seed starting mix into my trays. And the seed starting mix that I'm using this year is an organic burpee seed starting mix. I tried a few different varieties of seed starting mix last year. This was my favorite. The texture of it is really nice and light. It's uh, a fine grade. This also has coconut core in it, which I really liked because it helps retain the moisture. So I'm gonna be using this for all of the seeds that I start this year. Now I have already went ahead and pre-moistened my seed starting mix. It's really important that you pre-moisten all of your mix because when you put this in your cell trays and pat it down a little bit, the soil is already settled. If you don't do that and you put your seeds in there and you try to water them, they're just gonna wash away 
Um, they're gonna settle at the bottom and they won't germinate. So it's really important that you moisten your mix before you put it in your trays. So I have this pre-moistened and when you moisten it, you want it wet, but you don't want it dripping wet. So when I squeeze it, I want it to hold together a bit, but I don't want any water dripping out. So this is about perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill both of my cell trays and then we'll get the seeds planted in here. Now once I have this filled, I'm gonna go through and kind of tamp down each individual cell just to make sure that there aren't any air pockets. The ones around the edge usually need a little extra soil. And then I'm gonna get my seeds planted. I don't want them too packed in, but again, I want them settled so that when I mist them, I don't lose the seeds in the soil. Okay, so I've got them all tamping down. Now I just need to go through and fill in the soil where it's a little bit low. And like I said, it's mostly around the edges. Okay, this one's done. So I'm gonna set it down in the bottom tray and move on to the next one. Okay, so my trays are full of the seed starting mix. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-mark all of my cells so that I know exactly what seeds go where. I have 10 different varieties, so I'm gonna put five varieties in each tray. I'm gonna put um, most of the double echoes in one tray and then I have the double echo mix in the other four varieties I'll put those in the second tray So since these are 200 cell trays and I'm putting five varieties in each one I'm gonna have 40 plants started of each variety Which again, I know is plenty But I know some of these will not germinate and make it out into the garden just because Elizianthus is a little bit fussy, so I wanna make sure that I have plenty of plants. And actually, I think I'm gonna only have 39 of each one. These markers are kind of taking up the whole cell that I'm putting them in, so I'm probably not even gonna put a seed in that one. Now, Lysianthus seeds are super small. Most of your Lysianthus seeds are gonna come pelleted, which means they have a coating around them. So it's much easier to plant them and see where they're actually going. And Lysianthus need light to germinate. So I'm simply gonna set these on top of the soil. I'm gonna put one seed per cell. They're not gonna be covered with anything. A lot of people like to use vermiculite. I'm gonna hold off on using that because I didn't use it last year and I didn't have any problem. I can always add it later if I start to have an algae problem on top of the soil. So again, I'm just setting my seed right on top of the soil in the middle of the cell. I'm pressing it down just lightly with my finger. These are pelleted yellow, so they're really easy to see. I'm gonna go through and get all of these planted and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, so all of my seeds are in their cells. Now I just need to mist the top of the soil. That's gonna settle the seed down onto the soil and it's also gonna start breaking down that pelleted coating. So I'm just gonna go through and mist lightly over the top. And in some cases I can already see that pelleted coating breaking down. Okay, so all of my seeds are misted in. Now I just need to cover them with the humidity dome. And Lysianthus need light to germinate, so you wanna make sure to put them directly under the light. Once I see that I have germination throughout the whole tray, I'm gonna take that humidity dome off. You wanna maintain a good airflow once they actually start growing because that's gonna help reduce the algae that grows on the soil. I didn't have a lot of problem with that last year, but if I do this year, I can always sprinkle a little vermiculite on the top, but again, I'm not really worried about it. It wasn't a problem last year. Now, Lysianthus can take up to two weeks to germinate, so I'm just gonna sit back and see what happens. These are gonna live in these trays until they're ready to plant outside. Lysianthus can take a little light frost, and so I'm hoping to plant them outside about the 1st of May. And when I do plant them outside, I'm gonna go ahead and put some netting around the top of them because last year I did not put netting on them, and I had a problem with them flopping over a little bit, so I wanna make sure to prevent that this year. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'm really excited to see these start growing. I think this method is gonna work much better for me this year versus the method that I used last year. 
and I'm hoping that midsummer I have a lot of beautiful lisianthus to use in my market bouquets. So stay tuned for a lot more seed projects coming up. I'm also going to be doing some videos on what I learned in my first year flower farming, my favorite cut flowers from last year, and documenting everything else that I do up until spring. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon.